G'day, how are you going? Welcome to my channel, Bootlosophy, and my name is Ted. Today I'll be reviewing these beauties, the Gradstone Diesel Boots in a makeup from Badalassi Carlo Tannery in Italy that Gradstone call the Settle Tan Veg. <laughs> So this little beauty is the Gradstone Diesel Boot Saddle Tan Veg. I've had these for about seven months and while I have worn them regularly, uh, because of my huge rotation of over 50 boots at this stage, I haven't worn them particularly hard. But as you can see, they have been worn in uh, and I think enough now that I can give you a fair review of these boots and how they wear in everyday use. As you can see, the style falls into what can be classed as a service or dress boot of the plain toe variety. It has classic, simple, elegant lines. The profile is sleek and the sleekness creates a little optical illusion aided by the flange of the storm or split reverse welt, more of that later, uh, which makes it look like a very flat shoe. But there is plenty of room for your instep and toes in there. Viewed from the top, it has a very anatomical shape, rounding uh, the ball of your feet into rounded toes. Despite the rounded toe box, they don't look blocky like Red Wing's Iron Ranges or their blacksmith plain toe boot. The veg tan leather from Italy, which I'll go into uh, more detail later on, comes out of the box quite orange, but as you can see, it darkens with wear into a warm honey. And when you look down, it's framed by the lighter natural color of the veg tan welt. All in all, it looks like a very stylish boot. Let's talk about, uh, a bit about the company that makes these boots. Gradstone started in 2016 and was founded by Wyatt Gilmore and Josh Lane. They are a direct-to-customer company in that they sell only through their website, thus keeping prices down. Although at time of filming, I believe they're now available through the two or three standard and strange physical stores across various US cities. The Gilmore family has a long connection with quality footwear, starting, I believe, with Wyatt's grandfather, who worked for Alden for decades. For many years, Wyatt's father worked with a family in China who owned a factory in Xiamen, and Wyatt himself worked in that factory, learning his business for eight years, before the idea of starting Gradstone started to crystallize. Yes, the factory is in China. Gradstone boots are made in China. Let's get this quality thing out of the way. People may have many objections to items made in China, and poor quality is definitely one of them. If you want to hear my rant about all the reasons why people should not necessarily object to Made in China, you can check out my review of the Gradstone Diesel Boot in Coffee Suede that you can catch up on, uh, over here. But let me just deal with the, if it's made in China, it's poor quality objection. Let's just deal with that one. Quality is not about geography. I'm a management consultant, I know. Quality is about process and procedure and about specifications. If you specify poor materials and a specific cost, you will get a bad product. If you specify good materials and a higher target of manufacturing cost, and you impose QC processes and continuous inspections, you will get an ACE product. So let's just say Grantstone make their boots wherever with some very clear quality-based specs and processes. And they make a stunning variety of boots and shoes, six different styles of boots and seven different styles of shoes. They apply different makeups to their different styles, so that, for example, the diesel boot design comes in 12 different makeups, a variation of leathers and soles, uh, and that's not counting the limited releases that they run from time to time, including exotic leathers like Maduro shell, kangaroo, and ostrich. I'm going to put a link uh, in the description below to an interview Wyatt took part in on the Stitch Down website. I recommend you read it to see the vision and mission that shines through this company and the work in design and innovation that these guys undertake as well as some very revealing facts about how they handle customer service and QC. The link is in the uh, description box below. Okay now, let's take a look at how this diesel boot is put together. Uh, I'll start from the top down. As I said earlier, the uppers are veg tanned full grain leather from Italian tannery Badalassi Carlo in a colour that uh, Gradstone calls saddle tan. Let's unpack that a little. There are primarily three ways of tanning leather. Vegetable tanning, tanning using minerals, primarily chromium salts, and oil tanning. You either use uh, vegetable tannins or chromium salts or fats and oils 
to preserve the leather when you tan it. Sometimes the leather goes through two or more processes and that's referred to as combination tanning. Obviously veg tanning is a more natural way and is arguably kinder to the environment. Veg tanning takes longer, uh, could be up to several months in fact, and tends to produce tougher, more rugged leather, often used in making things like saddles for example. In this case, Badalasi put their hides into a huge barrel called a botali and cycles the hides for 30 to 35 days. The leather that comes out is tough and smells like saddles. It's a gorgeous smell and if we had a smell of vision television even after seven months where you'd be able to appreciate this earthy natural leather-like smell. In this particular saddle tan color it's a very light colored so it develops light and dark hues as you wear it and as rain and weather gets on it. You can see on the vap that it rolls as well as breaks with wear. Uh, I mentioned it came out of the box quite orange and has now got to be uh, warm honey but you can see the patina. This is a patina machine and I look forward to keeping on in the development of this patina. It's fully lined, even the tongue, which is semi-gusseted up to the second eyelid. Uh, this helps to avoid that slipping tongue syndrome that you get in some ungusseted tongue boots where the tongue slip to one side and wear. The lining is full, uh, full grain American cow leather and together with the Badalassi leather combines to a thickness of nearly 4 mils. That's pretty thick and when you put uh, the boot on, you know it's sturdy. It has the typical grindstone brass hardware of four large eyelets and three speed hooks. In my view, the perfect combination to help you uh, put these on and off. Grandstone gives you two pairs of laces, a flat cotton pair and these leather laces. One thing, grandstone laces are long, like very long. I'm not a huge fan of wrapping the laces around the shaft before I knot them, uh, but unless you cut the laces, this is what you have to do here. I haven't cut the laces yet, maybe I will one day. Coming down the boot, there's basically only the van and the tongue, the two quarters and a two-piece backstay. Very simple panels, so very elegant. The stitching is very even and secure. Triple stitching on the quarters, double stitching on the backstays. The stitch density per inch is even. The toe box is structured, I believe using real leather as stiffness. That's almost unheard of these days with the increasing use of leather board or thermoplastic elastic stiffness. The heel counter inside is also real leather, sandwiched between the lining and the uppers and capped by this two-piece backstay. If we start to move into the sole construction, this boot uses a veg tanned leather insole and under that is a cork filling and a steel shank. A shank is a piece of material, usually steel as in this case, that's inserted between here and here uh, as a stiffener and arch support so that when your feet compress into the sole, it supports your arch and doesn't sink into this gap. Uh, and it also stops you from getting tired arches if you're standing all day. The midsole and outsole are, are also veg tan leather attached to the uppers using Goodyear welt construction. A welt is a strip of leather that's sewn on the inside of the turned in uppers and the outside edge of the welt is then Goodyear stitched through the midsole and outsole. Uh, you can see the outsole stitch from above the welt and here under the sole. A Goodyear welt constructed boot provides the ability to resole the boot where you can simply undo the stitches here and replace the outsole without damaging the welt or the uppers. It's also more water resistant than other methods because the welt forms a barrier between the outside and the inside. In this case, it's even more water resistant because of this. Either a storm welt or split reverse welt, I can't tell the difference, but basically Part of the welt is flanged up against the outside of the uppers and that creates an extra barrier. And check this out. A welt being a strip of leather has a beginning and an end. Usually the joint is placed here on the inside of the boot against your arch in order to hide it. Often you'll be able to see the joint and sometimes the ends even overlap. In this case, you can play the spot the welt joint game because grants don't do it so well that it's near impossible to pick where the welt joins. As I kind of alluded to at the beginning, quality control is excellent. The factory goes through its QC processes as dictated by Grantstone, so they know the level of performance required. And then back in Grantstone's Michigan store, each shipment is looked over again, and just before each individual pair is sent out, there's a final inspection and a brush and polish. If we keep moving down now in construction, we see the heel is a, a full leather stacked heel with this rubber insert for a bit of grip and shock absorption. Which brings us to comfort 
fit and sizing. Some people are wary of leather-soled shoes. Of course, they can be very slippery, especially when new and before it scuffs and creates its own friction surface, as you see here. And once they scuff, they start to look a little ugly, maybe. Um, they also show wear more dramatically. Some people put toe taps on the tips here. I'm fine with that. Uh, the toe tap protect the wear on the toes. I like leather soles. I feel that they feel better. There seems a level of natural shock absorption. I'm careful when I walk in potentially slippery places like wet cement surfaces or well-polished shopping centre floors. I've worn leather soles since I was a kid, and as long as you're aware of them, I've found them quite safe. One thing with these though, they are a series of leather, cork and more leather, pretty thick, and they took a while to break in. Nothing too dramatic or painful, just awkward. That, by the way, was all the breaking required. These diesel boots were a great fit and comfy out of the box. The Leo Last with the wide toe box is anatomically perfect for my feet. The uh, heel and middle of my feet feel hugged and snug while I have space to wiggle my toes up front. The tough, thick uppers did need a bit of flexing like the sole, but a couple of days did it. All that leather and cork does provide a reasonable level of shock absorption and arch support. But these are not soft sneakers though. You know you're wearing a boot. Your feet are gripped but each step feels comfortable, there's no jarring, and the arch support stops your feet from getting tired at the end of the day. The Veg 10 leather squeaks a little, like you imagine a saddle would, as you sit on a saddle. I don't find it a problem. I, I find it like the gorgeous smell, just a characteristic of the saddle tan Veg 10 leather. It's real leather. As for sizing, like almost all my American boots, I ordered a half size uh, down from true to size. Assuming that true to size is as measured on the brand device that you stand on in shoe stores. I'm a US 8.5 in a D width in US sizing, and I bought these 8D, which is perfect. If you're in any doubt at all, I'd contact Grand Stone by phone if you're in the US, or at least by email, and chances are you might even speak to Wyatt or Josh. But whoever it is, you'll find them extremely knowledgeable and informative and helpful about the sizing. Okay, so it's a tough boot. When and where would you wear it, and what would you wear it with? Well, firstly, it is a tough boot, so technically, apart from the slippery leather sole, I guess you could wear it as a work boot, in a shop like, say, a hardware store where you're moving and kicking boxes, uh, or a carpentry shop, or something like that. I wouldn't, though, mainly because it's such a beautiful leather. It's a casual boot, as far as I would go. It's smart casual, and maybe a stretch to business casual. So my use case scenarios include going to my office, going shopping, uh, uh, going to friends for dinner or a barbecue, drinks and meals at the pub, uh, even nice date night dinners. Uh, so I wear them with smarter jeans, uh, brown or grey or black, any kind of chinos and top of a polo shirt, button downs, button ups, flannels, sports coats, blazers, bomber jackets, leather jackets. Uh, funny, I don't see myself wearing them with blue jeans and a t-shirt. They're casual, but not in that way in my mind. Because of the leather, I, I think they're dressy casual. At the end of the video, I'm going to put a few more stills and b-rolls of what I wear them with, so watch this video to the end. Now let's take a look at how you look after these boots. Instruction number one, brush, brush, brush with a good horsehair brush. A horsehair brush has really fine soft bristles that removes dirt and dust, uh, moves the waxes and oils around, and the heat of the brushing actually brings up a luster in the leather. Brush after every wear. I don't, but you should do what I say, not what I do. Uh, but at least brush them once a week. Don't let dirt and dust build up. Definitely put shoe trees in them after every wear. Shoe trees help them to retain the shape and stop curling up into an ugly toe spring. And shoe trees can help to reduce the rolls and creases if you don't want them. If dirty, uh, start with a damp cloth and wipe the dirt off. If you really have to, use a mild leather cleaner like Leather Honey. And if you really, really have to, uh, and they've got a real uh, muck and grease uh, layer, a mild saddle soap. But read the instructions. You don't want to be stripping the leather of the natural oils and waxes. It's a smooth leather. So when you feel the need to apply conditioner, uh, my go-to for smooth leathers is Venetian Shoe Cream in neutral. This will not only condition and moisturize the leather, but it will also buff it to a nice sheen. I'll put a link to some of these products in the description box below. Once the Venetian shoe cream dries to a haze, 10 minutes, brush to a nice sheen, 
and you can also use a polishing cloth to buff it some more. If the leather feels really dry, apply more Venetian shoe cream before you brush and leave it for a couple of hours before you brush, if not overnight. With this leather, I would avoid boot oils and mink oils. I think that would really darken the leather and turn it into a brown shoe. Now that you've got it nice and clean and buffed, let's look at the value. I bought these boots for US $360. At the time, it was a little over $500 Aussie dollars. For Australia, that is not cheap when you consider the number of fashion brands producing boots at $200 or less. But those are fashion brands. They are constructed in a wear, wear out, throw away manner. Cement construction soles are cheap, well corrected, that's sanded to you, well corrected leathers that are black or brown, artificially burnished and no real character. Sniff a fashion boot, you won't smell leather. It'll smell chemicals. I wouldn't even compare them with Thursday boots, as much as I love them, Thursday are entry-level boots. They sell for 200 US dollars and about 375 Aussie through Amazon in Australia. The real comparison is with quality boots like Australia's Iron Williams Chelsea boots that sell for nearly 600 Aussie dollars. American heritage boots like Red Wing and Wolverine sell here in Australia for over 500 dollars. Parkhurst, another of my favorite brands, costs around 500 Aussie as well. If you bought Alden from a US website, it would cost you close to $1,000 landed. So if you agree with me that Grantstone boots are a quality boot, then it is in the ballpark with those competitors. But I can't stress this enough. I think they are excellent quality. Some people have compared the way they're made, their attention to detail, the stitching, the QC, as being olden or better than Viber quality. I agree. I think made in China and direct-to-consumer obviously play a role in pricing because quality-wise, I think these are worth another $100 to $200 more, that's US dollars. I'm not going to shout that from the rooftops. I like their pricing and at that pricing, I'll keep buying. So that's it. That's what I think about the Grant Stone Diesel Boot in Saddle Tan Veg. If you have a pair, join in the conversation in the comments below. Do you agree with my assessment? If you don't have a pair, yet, <laughs> um, tell me what you think of what you see. Would you buy a pair? Leave a few comments below and if you like this video, I hope you did, can you do me a favour and click on the like button below? Unlike all the other YouTube channels, liking one of my videos will mean that YouTube will show this to more people and that will help me build my channel. And if you haven't already, why don't you subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button as well. I'm not going to send you scam emails or anything, all that'll do is that uh, it'll tell YouTube that people like the channel enough to follow me and that will also help me grow my channel and get it to more viewers. And when I release more boot reviews and boot related co uh, content, which I hope you like, YouTube will let you know it's up and you can watch it. So help me out, like and subscribe below. Now just watch to the end because I'll put some vision of what I wear uh, with these boots after the credits. I hope to see you again soon. Till next time, bye.